I wanted to start, first of all, by just uh, sharing with you that I am in the final day of a one-week challenge that uh, myself and four other members of uh, Congress have engaged in to live on a food stamp budget for a week. Um, that's $4 a day, and, uh, which is what the budget is for millions of Americans today. Um, and my wife and I and my daughter um, got through it in one piece, although I had to kind of take my little sort of uh, care package down to D.C. with me. And, um, and, and frankly, it has been harder than I thought and a real eye-opener. And so um, obviously you've got to shop as uh, aggressively as you possibly can. And frankly, you're buying sort of uh, somewhat lower cost items. And, um, and as I said, we're, we're about to get across the finish line at midnight tonight, which um, uh, but and, and again, you know, a cup and a half of coffee a day, you know, sort of half a peanut butter sandwich for lunch, generic cereal, little bananas, um, and a, again, um, some meals at night, which, uh, I mean, you don't have to worry about cleaning dishes when you're on this kind of a budget because you eat every bit of it. And, um, and as I said, it, it has been a real eye-opener in terms of uh, the fact that this is really um, an experience that isn't just limited to one week for millions of Americans. It's, it's something that, um, again, it's just part of a, a growing reality. And I, I raise it in the context of the Jobs Act because today there are, again, millions of Americans who are 99ers. They're people who have gone through their unemployment compensation period uh, which, as we all know, uh, has a cap of 99 weeks. And for a lot of them, there really is no nothing else waiting at the end of that time other than uh, food stamps or the uh, SNAP program, as it's now called. Um, and, you know, to, to basically live on $32, which is really what the, the, the amount is for a single adult, is really impossible. And as a result, we're seeing, again, record numbers of people showing up at food banks, record numbers of people showing up at soup kitchens. Um, there is now a suburbanization of poverty that's going on in this country. Um, again, I represent Connecticut, which has the highest per capita income in America, obviously lots of suburbs. And there are now, again, food banks that are operating in a lot of these communities. And you know, clearly, um, this is an issue in terms of the super committee and the uh, sequestration. You know whether or not a program like SNAP is going to be at risk, and and for people to go backwards from four dollars a day is something that I personally can't imagine. But at the end of the day, the real solution is to get this economy growing again, and the best social program is a job. I mean that is the bottom line in terms of what is a real um, fix to this problem. And you know one of the things that I just wanted to again spend a minute on, and then hand it over to my friend from Ohio who's here, is that uh, the pay for that's been proposed and su supported in the Senate and the, and the White House is a 5% surcharge on, on income above a million dollars. And recently we had, again, in my opinion, a patriotic, courageous American who stepped forward to really put the spotlight on what that means. Warren Buffett, um, who, uh, again, is a legendary um, investor, financier, commentator uh, on all the news programs and the business channels, um, shared his tax return for last year. And his gross income, his top line, was $63 million. His adjusted gross income was $32 million. And his uh, payment was roughly about $6 million. And as he um, explained in a number of op-eds, that roughly translates into a tax rate of 17%, which, again, you're here, Johnny, on the spot with the, uh, uh, the charts, which is terrific. If, you, if his uh, tax return was subjected to the surcharge, which has been proposed and supported in the Senate, basically it would add about another two to three million dollars of tax liability uh, in terms of what his return would be, and his overall effective rate would be roughly about 25 percent. And he clearly makes the argument about the Buffett rule that he shouldn't pay a higher rate than his secretary and his staff, which today he pays a lower rate than all of them. But the real, I think, power of his argument, which he made in the New York Times op-ed piece, Stop Coddling the Rich, was that the tax rates that were he paid gladly back in the 80s and 90s, uh, which again is even higher than it would be if we passed the, the, uh, the, the surcharge, did nothing to inhibit his willingness or desire to go out and compete and invest and participate in the, in the drive for the American dream. And if you look at the growth rates that we experienced in the 1990s, when again, the tax rates on both capital gains and regular income was much higher than it, it is today and would be still higher than if we adopted the Jobs Act pay for, 
um, as he art you know, powerfully makes the, the, the point, it would do nothing to inhibit growth. It would do nothing to inhibit or punish success. Um, it, in fact, would just do a lot to try and create some balance in our public finances so that we can afford to do the great things that a great nation um, must do to get us out of the predicament that we're in today. And, you know, I want to just say to anyone who's watching here today who's on food stamps, having experienced briefly the challenge that you face over a one-week period of time, um, you know, we can do better as a nation than that, and that we must adopt the JOBS Act to make sure that we solve the problems of Americans who today are trapped in, a, in a, an economy that allows no way out except subsistence programs that is inadequate to lead a healthy, productive life. And with that, I would yield back to you, Mr. Garamendi.